Hello and welcome to This Time Africa. I'm your host, Sia Matilda Banga, and as you know, This Time Africa showcases our African men, women, our beauty, culture, education, um, emerging leaders, politicians, and much, much more. All in the dish, right here on This Time Africa. But the question always is, what's on this time? All right, this time, uh, Africa, our clock faces Gabon, where we are going to talk about democratic rights for the people of Gabon. And I have two gentlemen in the studio with me from the Gabonese Diaspora for Democracy and Human Rights. And they are in the presence of the president, Monsieur Jean-Claude Zamba. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And Frank Joctain, who is a member of the Dream Team. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. You are welcome, gentlemen. I'm glad that you could stop by so we could have this chit-chat about your organization. Um, I believe that the Gabonese Association have like a general organization like most of our diaspora organizations have. But my question is, what prompted the instituting of democracy and human rights as far as your organization? What prompted that? Well, I would say that First, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Um, it's always, uh, we're always grateful, not just us here in the diaspora, but also the people in Gabon who are constantly under violation of their human rights and their fundamental rights, who are also under any type of pressure from a, a legitimate government. Um, so in 2016, Gabon actually had a, a presidential election. During that particular time, we actually saw once again, the rights of the Gabonese voters being violated. The person that was actually elected uh, did not take power. Uh, we have a family rule dynasty that's been in power for 42 years. And when we saw the level of human rights abuses, um, the next day where they declared the elections, a thousand people were arrested. Uh, we have the headquarters of one of the opposition leaders that actually won the election. Uh, that was actually became under a heavy artillery. We have people calling us and telling us that they're not sure if they're going to be able to see the light the next day. Um, so we all stood up. So pretty much the entire Gabonese diaspora stood up as one person and say enough is enough. We're not going to allow this to happen again. And in different parts of the world, in different countries, in different parts of the U.S., we have groups of Gabonese people that actually came together and say, we need to speak about what's going on. We need to put an end to this. And until, uh, since these people don't give us an opportunity to sleep, we're not going to give them an opportunity to do anything <laughs> to else. <eat. laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Do you want to add something to that, Frank? I think he said very eloquently. Mm -hmm. So uh, I will, uh, we can continue. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Good. So, um, so that triggered you're instituting this um, organization. What's the, you, you said, of course, that the Gabonese um, diaspora were very much in tune with that. Are you talking about the diaspora only in the U.S. or different parts of the world? The entire world. The entire world? Yes. Okay. So we have people in France, we have people in South Africa, in Ghana, uh, in Germany, in Canada, in the U.S., um, even some people in the country. What, uh, what was very different this time is before it was really hard to see somebody, especially in the country, sometimes outside, mm -hmm. be able to come in front of a TV or a video and yes. having the face open and then say something negative about what was happening. For and fear of? For fear of retaliation okay. of the families and so on, because this is something that was going on for many years. Yes. But uh, since 2016, people fearlessly came in front of TV and said exactly what they thought was wrong with the country. And, and um, just like the president said, and it's because you've had a president in power for how long, Frank? We had, um, actually we have a family in power for the last 42 years. When okay. Omar Bongo died, his son took years. power. 42 okay. years. And then his son took power for 10 years. So we have one family ruling the country for 52 years now. And so how effective has been the opposition? I'm just asking because I think I already know the answer. But for the sake of conversation. <laughs> yeah, very good question. Um, you know, the opposition has its place, but also there's some areas where the opposition is not that effective. Yes. 
that's why for many years, even in, in the entire world, we see we actually saw the emergence of civil society organizations mm -hmm. that's been able to do a little bit more work and be able to work with organizations elsewhere to actually achieve that work. But at the same time, we also saw how civil society organizations have been under threat and some are dying. So you see more people dying because being in the civil society uh, arena than being in the opposition necessarily mm. because civil society are ready to go to the length of what it takes oh, okay mm -hmm. all right so so how does your organization influence the political climate from outside how yeah. what influence do you have i will let my uh, brother say something about it. yes uh one thing i would like to say about the opposition is that um when you live in a country where the people in power control everything, they control the justice system, they control the electoral mm -hmm. process, they control, I mean, absolutely everything. So it's very hard for the opposition to express itself. Mm -hmm. The problem that we have in Gabon is that for the last, since 1990, Gabonese people have been voting, but each time they vote, the person who lose the election govern and the person who win the election is, uh, has to uh, bow down or step aside. So uh, what we are doing here in the diaspora mm -hmm. is that we are trying to erase the awareness of our people Great. by letting them know that they have human rights, that yes. they are human beings, and that the right of a people need to be respected. And the reason why we are fighting today is that uh, we want the Gabonese people to know that when they vote, what, whatever they vote should be respected. And the one who supposed to win the election should govern and the one who lose the election should concede. Should just concede and sit back. That is correct. And do you have the backing of the international organizations? Yes. Have you had the backing of Yes, that? we Yes, we do have the backing, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the European Union, for example, uh, witnessed what happened in Gabon and agreed that the opposition did win in Gabon. And actually, they were supposed to have sanction against the Gabonese states. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, France, France, the country, uh, d does not agree with its partner in Europe. So that's the problem that we have. So that's why, again, the diaspora is trying to put pressure to make, uh, to, so people, so everybody can realize that there will not be peace and stability in this country until the Gabonese people will and, uh, and wish will be implemented in the country. I agree with you. And I think um, it's not just for Gabon as a country. What about the Central Africa as a whole, general? Well, um, you'll be surprised to hear some facts. Um, uh, according to very uh, good sources, mm -hmm. for example, the heart of money laundering in Africa is in Central Africa. Mm. Uh, you also see the longest running powers of family being also in Central Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, in Cameroon, we have uh, Mr. Bia, yes. that's been in power since uh, November 1982. Okay. Uh, in uh, Congo, Brazzaville, we have Sasun Geso since uh, 1979, I believe. Over, over 30 years. Yes. Gabon, we have uh, since 1967, the same family. Um, and people will say Quatuor Guinea since the 1980s. Yeah. Um, so you have a concentration of really uh, families uh, that's been in power for that long. Uh, but at the same time, um, there are a lot of things that's happening in terms of money going into certain places and having a hard time to really understand what's going on. So I think this is a time where uh, we believe that the world should kind of look into what's going on in this particular part of the world. Because as my uh, brother here likes to say, and you know, core back say, injustice uh, anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Yes. Um, you have the youth population that you have to look into. When you're looking at Africa, we have about 19% of the world population of youth being in Africa, which is about 226 million kids. Um, and you have 60% of the 60%, population, I was about to say youth, which yeah. is under the age of 25. Yeah. So, you know, when you talk about human rights, uh, unfortunately, people don't really understand what human rights are about. There's about 60 human rights elements, mm -hmm. right? The right to education, yes. the right to good health, mm -hmm. the, the right to find adequate work. Mm -hmm. So when you have a large amount of the population that cannot find work, mm -hmm. it becomes an issue. It yes. becomes a national security 
interest because those particular youth could be attracted by people who have different intent just because they're going to provide food for them. Food, yeah. Correct. So today in the U.S., there's a big issue about immigration. People are not moving and leaving their loved ones just because they want to go to a new place. Mm -hmm. It's because they don't have the right of access of what they should have access to. That's why they're looking into finding better places where they'll be able to support usually the family back in the country. So we cannot talk about let's say addressing that immigration is an issue without necessarily addressing the core issue was creating people to move maybe to go across the um, Atlantic and dying to yes. try to find better heaven when in their own country they cannot have the bare necessities. And it's because of bad leadership. It's because of bad leadership. Which leadership. are also encouraged by some Western countries. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. And you were talking about France and Europe. And it made me smile because mm -hmm. I am looking for that day when Africa will own its own. Mm -hmm. When Africa will have people that will speak for Africa mm -hmm. and African leaders will listen to them without the influence of ours. I'm not saying that we don't need other people. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we have to wait Correct. for other people to meddle in their affairs or politics mm -hmm. for it to go well. And that means that the leaders of Africa should know when they should go. Why is this a trend in Africa? Let's, for, let's just divert for, for, for a little bit. Why is this a trend? And how, how do we overcome it? I think there's many ways. Um, I think uh, we have good examples. Right? Mm -hmm. We yeah. have like countries like uh, Botswana, Cap Verde, mm -hmm. um, Mauritius. We have Ghana that now has been leading the yeah. way in being a very democratic country. Sierra Leone has been Sierra Leone, uh, a couple exactly. of democratic okay. elections and we're now exactly. stable. So it's, it's not like it's not possible. It's yeah. just that sometimes having the right leaders yeah. who understand the role, the role is not to serve themselves and be you know, at the expense of the population. The role is that being elected, that's an honor, but they have to understand they're there to serve, not to pretty much implement their own will. Yes. But we also have some national interest of some certain countries that are trying yeah. to have, and what they do, unfortunately, is you cannot really have inclusive growth mm -hmm. without having respect of human rights right. and democracy. Yes. If you know that you're being elected by these people to run the country, and you're not doing the right job, and they could fire you, your action will be different. But when you know that, you know, even if they vote, we could change that particular vote. There's and no accountability. Power, no accountability. And, if, and, and who is going to hold them accountable if they have the military on their side and they can shoot at will and do whatever they want? Well, this is where, you know, like uh, United Nations, uh, the so-called countries that talks about human rights and freedom even we could talk about the african union yes uh or even regional integration um uh, bodies yeah. could come and say i mean we, we've seen what the african union is, is doing in the sense that if somebody comes to power through a coup well the country will be put outside of the list of a member yes. but they have to go further because again who makes the, the final decisions about what happened is the heads of states so if a head of state uh, is not leg legitimate, it's not going to come and say, oh, you know what, if another country does this, we should sanction them or we should sanction that particular president. So we should have better institutions mm -hmm. that would actually keep accountable the people in power. For example, in uh, two years ago, we're having a ball, uh, well, in um, Congo, but three years ago in Gabon, for 48 hours the access to internet was actually stopped. Stopped, yes. But you know, the, the, a, a very good and uh, interesting thing is, today, access to internet is part of human rights. It is part of human rights. Right? Because that's the media, yeah. So you have people that come and swear on the Constitution that they would abide by the Constitution and protect the rights of every citizen, but when it fits, they violate without remorse that particular constitution that they're supposed to uphold. Correct. So how do we empower the people? Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, what I wanted to say to this is what really happened, especially in Central Africa, 
is I think is the, this part of the world is very rich. And because it's very rich, there's a lot of people who have a lot of interest. And unfortunately, it's not just the African people who have interest in their own in their own country. Mm. You have foreign countries who have interest and they, they want to have access to those raw materials. So the natural resources, right. yes. So because of that, what is happening is that they do not like head of states who are legitimate. They do not like head of states who are loved by the people. Yes. They do not want head of states who are listening to the people. Yeah. But they want a head of states who are not liked by the people so they can control them better. Mm -hmm. And of course, they, are, they maintain themselves in power by those foreign entities yes. because they serve the interests. And now what's happening is because that individual, that president, is not elected by the people, then those power are telling them that we are going to be there to protect you, but in return, we want to have access to your oil, we want to have access to your, your timber, you want to have access to your raw materials. So that's what is happening. So that's why they're staying longer than they should then the other thing also uh that i believe is because they have done so much uh bad thing in the country they in order for for them to maintain and sell power they kill people uh they embezzled money they uh, they, they, they they stole money uh from the country so what's happening is without power they are afraid of reprisal. They are yes. afraid that people will be looking for them and maybe a uh, type of a vendetta or something like that because Correct. they did so much wrong to the people. So the only way for them to be safe is to remain in power. Exactly. So you were asked, you were about how to ask we, How do we empower the people? Because I have known mm -hmm. of countries where, I um, mean, like rebels and hunters or jonters want to come and take over. But the people are empowered enough. There's a awareness raising. There's a lot of advo advocacy. And we can say no to the rebels. We did it in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. So how is your organization empowering the people, the civil society organizations there in Gabon? Yeah, by, by, uh, I, think through, I think through awareness. Uh, um, that's what we. That's why we are very active here in the U.S. Like you said, they do not allow our people to dream. So therefore, we outside of Gabon, we will not allow them to sleep. That's right. So what we're doing, we try to let them know that they have right. They are human beings like any other human beings in the face of the earth, mm -hmm. and that their right should not be violated, and they should not accept the status quo. So what we are forcing is we are we are letting them know that. They need to pressure that those governments. And we start to see more and more Gabonese people uh, who are defying the government. Like, for example, not too long ago, I believe it was three weeks ago, there was a young Gabonese who went in front of the uh, French embassy and declared that France need to stop encouraging uh, this government to do what they're doing. And, uh, of course, unfortunately, he was arrested, but he had the courage to do it. And I think that's one voice. That's right? one voice. So one voice added to another voice and our voice right here in the studio mm -hmm. can make a difference. We are talking about democratic and human rights mm -hmm. as far as it relates to the country of Gabon. We'll be right back. I'm here with the gentleman from the democratic um, and human rights. promote your business? Do you want to talk about your nonprofit organization? Do you want to talk about your culture? Introducing the online web TV, Africa Today. We are live every Sunday at 3 p.m. Our shows are 3 p.m. Sunday Guests with Elaine Pierre. 4 p.m. This Time Africa with San Natilda Banga. 5 p.m. Transformation Point with Dr. Natalie Kamsudomo. 5.30, Cyber Connect, Cyber Connect with Gene Bosco Fogham. You can watch us live at the same time on four platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and using the Africa Today app. Download our app today for Android or Apple. Promote your business today. For more information, go to www.africatoday.com. Africa Today, the best of digital TV.
and welcome back to This Time Africa. With me in the studios, I have the president of the Gabonese Diaspora for Democracy and Human Rights right here in the USA. And I also have, um, his name is Jean-Claude Zamba and Frank Jackton, who is a member of the Dream Team. If they don't let us dream, we can't let them sleep. That's our slogan that I'm going to take out of here. But what is the... What is your organization doing now? You wanted to add something to influence the civil society back home. And then secondly, I know that we have a conference coming up, so I want us to deliberate on that. Go okay. ahead. So one of the things that we are doing, we, we, everywhere we are, Gabonese people, when ministers are coming, we are letting uh, them know that we are, do not agree with what they're doing back home. And because uh, our brothers and sisters are not allowed to speak, to express themselves, then we will let them know what we really feel. And we're making their stay in this foreign land, like in the U.S. or in Europe, very difficult okay. by, by, uh, uh, by um, how do you call it, Pankat. Placards? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. Where we're saying that you are, you know, dictators and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And of course... In the hotel room or hotel, uh, uh, in the hotel where, wherever they are, there's demonstration. De there's demonstration. So everybody is asking who is there, who is there, and we say it's the minister of Gabon who is there, and uh, and they don't like that because of course dictatorship does not like press. They don't like you to expose to the world what they're doing back home. Correct. So that's what we're doing, and of course when we're doing that, we also giving hope to our brothers and sisters who are back home because what they see is that okay if they are able to do that and they can see how fragile those ministers are when they're not in gabon see yes. and in order to see them like that that give them that remind them that they are also human beings like they are that they're showing strength in gabon because they have all that system all that but when apparatus they come out. but when they come out they become very fragile and so what we're doing purposefully is to show them that that they are human beings like us and um, we've been and very also successful. to also give hope to people that if they can speak, you can always become a voice for the voiceless. Exactly. I think so. And also to encourage other Gabonese in the community mm -hmm. that you are doing something and mm -hmm. by that other people can join. So let's talk about the conference. There is a big conference coming up. Correct. In Washington, D.C. Yes. All right. So tell September. us about it. So the conference is going to be a two, uh, two days conference. Uh, we're going to have on Thursday, September 5th, mm -hmm. uh, uh, conversation panelists uh, from different institutions and organizations in the U.S. Okay. Um, we're going to have four panels. Uh, first panel, we're going to talk about the overview of human rights and political uh, situations in Central Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, second one, we're going to be talking about corruption and kleptocracy. As we say that Central Africa is a heart of money laundering in Africa. Uh, we're going to have the third one that's going to talk about the influencers in terms of external powers, the new role of a country like Russia. Uh, but of course, we know that China has been really uh, doing a lot of work in, in Africa in, in, in addition to European countries. And then we're going to look at the fourth panel going to be the role of the U.S. What can the U.S. do in influencing change or bring democrat more democratic value and human rights respect? Uh, in that particular part of the world. Uh, then we're going to have a training for people who are interested in learning more about how to be more effective uh, with governments who are not following the rule of law or who are actually abusing the rights of people, especially people uh, who are either prisoner of conscience or people who actually want to speak their voice. For example, us coming here today, uh, tomorrow we might actually be sentenced for five years in jail and about ten thousand dollars. You want me to raise a plaque head yeah. by saying no? I would because do that. Because <laughs> there's been a, a recent law okay. that has said that anybody in the country or outside the country who speak bad about the president will be sentenced to five years in jail and a ten thousand feet fine. Oh really? So but the right to democracy. The right to democracy says that we are not speaking bad about the president. He has inherited power, which the people did not give to him. So that's not a right to democracy. You are saying that we want to speak as a voice that, Mr. President, you are not in there democratically. Is it? I, I, did I put it right? Correct. You put it correctly okay. right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So who are the, who are the, what's your audience like? What's your audience for the program? 
So uh, one thing is because Gabon is a, a former French colony, so we speak French. Yeah. Um, and for si tu voulais pa parler français aussi, tu veux pas for the for the public, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And uh, since 2016, we've been really focusing on a French audience. Okay. But we realized that here we live in the U.S. You. you know, a great country, and we have some other partners that don't necessarily speak French yeah. Yeah. that will be important for us to actually also speak and enlighten them about the situation. So our audience for this particular uh, program is anybody, any institution, any government who have as its heart human rights, the respect of human rights and the, the respect of dignity. Because at the end of the day, uh, those countries and countries like Gabon are making sure that they are not, they, they really put, you know, making the people lose the respect or not having the dignity. The dignity, loss right? of human dignity. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So U.S. government, different agencies, uh, any uh, freedom fighters, uh, anybody could join forces with us in bringing really uh, that freedom that we so enjoy in countries like this to that part of the world are people that we want to listen to our message. Can you tell the viewers where this conference is going to be held at in your website? I'm sure, you know, the time flies so fast by, right? but please share that information with us. So um, people, we have an RSVP that's going on now. They could go to IRI.org and in there they were going to see a link to RSVP. The event will be on uh, I Street uh, on Thursday 5th of September from 9.15 to 5 p.m. Lunch will be served uh, and we're going to have the four different panels. Uh, regarding um, our organization, they could find us on Facebook by just typing Gabonese Diaspora for Democracy and Human Rights. Uh, we're also uh, available on Twitter, on Instagram, and our website is Gabon, the number four, democracy.org. All right. Any long last word from you? For you? From you? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, what I would like to One say... One minute last word. No problem. <laughs> what I would like to say is that it's important that uh, Gabonese people enter fully into those states of democracy. And for that, the will of the Gabonese people need to be heard. And I believe that the best way that the, our word can be heard is that everywhere we are, Gabonese people and the friends of Gabon, I mean that every country in the world, should support us in this endeavor because democracy in the world is the best thing for humanity. I believe that if there's no democracy, there can be no human right because when the people uh, express themselves freely, they always protect their own interests and their well-being. So I encourage every loving people, people who love democracy, to join the Gabonese people. We are a very small country of two point, I mean two million, uh, two million. Uh, but we are people who, uh, who is a country which is very rich, and I believe that. I think you, you are the, you are the mm -hmm. fifth largest um, oil producer in Africa as well. That is correct. We didn't have time to talk about that, but hey, guess what? what? Hold your thoughts. We will be right back after the conference no to problem. see how it went. Okay? Absolutely. We'll talk about the outcomes and the results when we come back again to this time, Africa. It's been a wonderful time as I have been speaking with President. Jean-Claude Zamba and Frank Joctain, who are members of the Gabonese Diaspora for Democracy and Human Rights. This has been a wonderful time right here on This Time Africa. Hey, you know what to do. Watch us on Sundays at 4 p.m. on africatoday.com or you can go to Twitter, you can go to Facebook and watch us. And if you do have a flat screen TV, get your fire stick and watch us on Amazon as well. YouTube, that's where we are. Again, this has been your host, Sia. Till the banger, and I'll see you next time.